I'm Artie and it's December, which means that all month I've been subjected to my mother's Christmas playlist, including Michael Bublé's no homo version of Santa Baby, which goes something like this. Santa Poppy forgot to mention one little thing, ka -ching. No, I don't mean as a lone Santa Bunny, so hurry down the chimney to For that other Artemis. <laughs> but yeah, uh, since this is a Michael Bublé hate account, I thought I'd take this opportunity to talk about this phenomenon wherein the cishet people out there like to change all the gender words and pronouns in songs so that they don't have to appear any shade of queer at all. Like, I really can't be the only person this drives absolutely batshit, yet somehow it keeps happening. Why does it keep happening? Why? If I'm being realistic, I know why. It's because the fragile cis heterosexual types are so scared of what you'd think of them if they were to say anything in contradiction to their perfectly indisputable way of being. Like, so indisputable that it would be totally destroyed if even one man got up and sang I am woman at karaoke. I would have to say that I kind of agree with said hypothetical man's decision to not sing that song. I mean, it's kind of boring. But man, I feel like a woman exists and why, why wouldn't everyone sing that at karaoke? Speaking of man I feel like a woman, like how would an insecure cishet man even sing that song? Would it be like, woman, I feel like a man. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't even, I can't even get it out. It's just so inherently ridiculous to me. <laughs> but I, you know, mate, I feel like an envy kind of works. I mean, it's it's still in the spirit of the original song, which is about celebrating being a gender minority, but I still wouldn't do it because that's not how the song goes and the song is a jam as it is. And I know I'm not a woman, but I would still happily belt One, it out as two, it is. One, two, three, four. aside, this actually really bothers me. And there's more to it than just that. There's kind of a hierarchy of just how irritating these kinds of alterations are. So, without further bullshittery, I'd like to unveil the Artemis scale of don't change the lyric to that, you Arta Capsicum. Tier 1. Did you really have to? This tier encompasses songs where alterations made A. do not affect the rhyme scheme, B. do not affect the meter, C exists to avoid the singer misgendering themselves, and D do not affect the overall message or feel of the song. Here's why this one is disappointing but understandable. Gender is a big deal for a lot of people, cis and trans alike, and being misgendered can hurt. I totally get people wanting to avoid feeling that hurt, but I do have to say that it will pull me out of the moment if I'm familiar with the song you're singing. If it's not a song I'm familiar with, Given that there are no mismatches in the uh, meter or the rhyme scheme, I probably wouldn't even notice. Actually, if I do know your gender and I hear you sing the original version that doesn't match that, I will probably have a little moment where I go, huh? Oh, yeah, right, it's probably a cover. Whereas otherwise I would have just probably assumed you wrote the song in the first instance. That is actually something that happened with the song Tainted Love. Growing up, I'd heard the soft cell version and only the soft cell version. And it was only recently that I heard the original and realized, aha, there's been some gender shifty business going on here. Got it. Now I'm just confused when I sing that song. Do I sing it the way it was originally written or the way I first heard it? Or do I edit it to match my own gender identity? Now that the gender dissociations are so murky, can I just replace that word with any monosyllabic sound? Once I ran to you, now I run from you. This tale of you give and I give you all the droid could give you. I'm just really confused. You see what happens to me when you do this? Like, I, I get it, if you do, but do you really have to? Slightly more egregiously, we have tier two. Ugh, why? This tier encompasses songs where the alterations made A. exist to avoid the singer misgendering themselves, B. do not affect the rhyme scheme, C. do not affect the overall message or feel of the song, but D. 
do affect the meter. In case you don't know what meter is, it's a poetry term that describes the number of syllables in a single line. For a fun exercise, there's a type called common meter, which is a metrical pattern that the Pokemon theme song and Amazing Grace have in common, as well as a bunch of other songs. Try to sing any one of them to the tune of the other. It's very fun. I want to be the very best Like no one ever was To catch them is my real test To train them Anyway, unfortunately we have the thing with the words man and woman where one has one syllable and the other has two, which means they can't really be swapped out that well. There is a way of swapping man and woman that does work, but to be honest if you pull this off you're going to end up in the previous tier anyway. The best example of this comes from outside the world of gender adaptation for cover songs because the swapping of man and woman happens within the same original song. The song in question being a bisexual anthem, Don't Stop Me Now. Let's count the syllables together. Awesome. Let's look at the next chorus. the meter doesn't change but the gender being talked about does? That's what we call masterful bisexual songwriting, my friends. Just masterful. But yeah, if you really want to sing Am I a Woman or Am I a Muppet, I'm gonna be giving you massive side-eye, but at least you haven't totally destroyed the integrity of the song. You've destroyed it a little bit, but j just a little bit. Tier 3. Okay, just, I, I think it's time to stop. This tier encompasses songs where the alterations made A. exist to avoid the singer misgendering themselves, B. do not affect the overall feel or message of the song, but C. do disrupt the rhyme scheme, and D. do disrupt the meter. Similarly to man and woman's lack of syllabic continuity, the two words don't actually rhyme with each other despite them both ending with M, A, and N. Man features the A vowel, and woman has the eh vowel in it. So swapping the two of them when one of them is meant to be a rhyme? Not going to work. It's gonna hurt me. Please stop. Boy, girl, guy, chick are all single syllable words that don't rhyme with each other. So swapping any of them out can only ever wreak havoc on a song's poetic integrity. The first example that comes to mind comes entirely from having a shitty substitute teacher in high school. For my VC music performance class, I was on the soloist track, which meant that when we had rehearsal time, I was expected to find a space to rehearse on my own. But given that I'm a highly distractible bastard, a lot of the time what I ended up doing was like wandering around or helping the group musicians with their arrangements. One of the groups was working on a version of Walking By Myself by Gary Moore. It goes something like this. I'm walking by myself, I hope you Anyway, uh, one day we have a substitute teacher who comes in with the strangest energy I've ever seen. Talks about himself like he's a god amongst musicians and we should all look up to him, and even takes time to complain about having dated the love of Freddie Mercury's life, Mary Austin. Regardless, this character of a human being who was in my life for a grand total of two hours told the girls who were singing that song that because they were not in fact men, but were women, singing I just want to be your loving man was about the worst thing they could do. Now what followed is something I will never forget, because unfortunately it is so bad that it is forever burnt into my brain. They started to sing, I'm walking by myself, I hope you understand.
unfortunately it does get worse. Tier 4. Stop! No! Do not do this! Why?! This tier encompasses songs where the alterations made A. Do not affect the meter B. Do not affect the rhyme scheme C. Do not affect the overall message or feel of the song But D. Exists to avoid the singer looking gay. These kinds of covers are excessively common because switching out the pronouns he and she manages to preserve both the rhyme scheme and the meter with relative ease. Either that, or you can do the tainted love thing from earlier where you switch out words that were never meant to rhyme in the first instance. Because of the pervasiveness of this let's not gayify the song attitude, I still get incredibly confused whenever I sing Scarborough Fair. Tell him to make me a cambric shirt Parsley sages wearing time With a new seam, no needlework Then she'll be a true love of mine Usually I just end up musing about a very gender-fluid ex-true love of mine. But it's really everywhere. Shirley Bassey's cover of the Beatles classic Something is incredible. But how much more incredible would it have been if she was singing about a woman? I don't know, I don't know. I'll leave you with that thought before we start talking about the things that make me really mad. Tier 5, stop right now, thank you very much! This tier encompasses songs where the alterations made do not disrupt the overall message or feel of the song, but either alter the rhyme scheme or the meter for the purposes of avoiding making the singer look gay. It's bad enough to just heteronormatively wander in and start changing pronouns in a mostly inconspicuous way, but if you are so concerned with looking queer that you would mess with the poetic integrity of a song, then you and I have some things to talk about. Like, is being queer that bad that you have to go in there and totally gut a huge part of what makes music so moving and effective? If your answer to that question is yes, I have no idea what you're doing on my YouTube channel, make sure you leave me a dislike and a hate comment and tell all your homophobic friends that I'm here so that they can boost my tiny little baby channel enough that I can start monetizing my content. Regardless of why, a great example of this atrocity is the Counting Crows version of Joni Mitchell's Big Yellow Taxi, which, in addition to being just a terrible version of an originally great song that seems to completely miss its premise, has the audacity to turn this hey, Last night I heard the screen door slam And a big yellow taxi took away my old man Into this Late last night I heard the screen door slam and the big yellow taxi took my girl away Like, what the actual fuck did you think you were accomplishing with that appalling display of your lack of regard for music? Like, you already had the cop-out excuse of old man also meaning dad, so you could just be like, Oh no, I met my dad, totally wasn't gay. But no, you were so fragile in your need to portray this perfect ideal of heterosexuality that even that was not enough for you. Would you believe me if I told you it gets worse? Tier 5. Ah! This tier includes songs where the alterations made disrupt the meaning and feel of the song for the purposes of the singer not looking gay or not misgendering themselves. Basically, if we've got to the point where fucking with the gender of the song is going to completely change the meaning or feel of it, like, just go and write your own song. You can even take the same theme, even the same key or meter, and then BOOM! You're adding something to the history of music. But no. Unfortunately, folks are so scared of challenging notions of gender and sexuality that occasionally we get covers that completely destroy the meaning of the original song. For a very pervasive example of this bullshit, let's take a look at When I Was Your Man by Bruno Mars. The original song goes something like this. It all just sounds like ooh, 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 too young, too dumb to realize that I should have bought you flowers and held your hand. Should have gave you all my.
song about a person regretting that they didn't appreciate their partner more while they were still together. It's a classic example of, as Joni Mitchell says, don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you've got till it's gone. The song only mentions the gender of the singer once, in the final line. And it's in the title too, I guess? But funnily enough, that hasn't stopped all these covers going up, proclaiming themselves, when I was your man, female edition. I don't know, but to me that makes you seem way more trans than just singing when I was your man at the end of the song. But okay, sure, you don't want to misgender yourself. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I don't get it, but I get it. The last chorus of the song is the singer singing about how they hope their ex's next partner treats them better, with lyrics like this. I hope he buys you flowers. the last line to something like and you'd cause minimal disruption to the song. But no, then the song would be gay, and we can't go around letting the song be gay, now can we? So we got a lot of covers by women singing the song like this. It all just sounds like song. Like, it's no longer a song about personal growth and realising your past mistakes, it's a song telling an ex that they'd fucked up. Which, to be honest, if I was going to write a song telling an ex they'd fucked up, I would probably not be doing that with a mournful piano ballad. And I can think of a number of other artists who've written songs on that very same topic that seem to agree with me. Since you have gone, I can breathe for the first time. your own song if it gets to this point. Don't ever make another cover like this. Like, ever.